of the leaders then, they were deficient in knowledge, they had no exposure, they didn't understand the science of business, science of economics, they didn't understand simple accounting. But our future was dependent on them. This was the unfortunate situation. But a lot of us never gave up. If you had to talk to your brother your sister, you had to go to night, queue up from 2 a.m. If mistakenly you called, it was your turn. And this night was engaged, you go back to the queue. So this is the Nigeria we are coming from. And that's when I look around here, and I tell you, God did not bring any man or woman on earth this century to be poor. But in business, many are called, few are chosen. And that's the X factor. I had the best property in the uh, allow ourselves with British mentality. To sell a laptop was a celebration. My first customer was still for his dungeon. We didn't understand computers anyway. When I gave the talk, he said, stand, stop, stop, stop. How much is it? I said $35,000, he wrote a check. That was when the dollar was 89, 80 kobo per dollar. I came back as a student, what nothing. I had how much in my body. That was huge. Two days after, somebody in your sector, he died in a motor accident in Ikoyi. I remember his name. He came to my office. I configured the equipment. He came to 3.76 million naira. The guy talked too much, so I didn't take him serious. I just thought he was one of the excited guys. Two days after, he brought 3.76 million naira. I thought the man was a crook. So I asked him to go to Ila Bank. Oji Carlos' wife was the manager. She received this money to my account. She confirmed to me what Jenny money. I entered my toilet and said my prayer. I said, this is a great country. So I became a millionaire. Less than three months of launching a business in this country. I can't find this anywhere in the book. There's a man I won't mention his name. When I was in Victoria Island, my staff just brought him up to introduce him to me. That's the only politician who says he's not becoming governor, it's between God and the country. I'm sure a lot of you know the guy, but I don't want to mention him. And by the time we talked, the man right there he didn't come to buy equipment. He just came to see somebody there. 
the man invested 126 million money. I thought it was a joke. We went to GTB. He called his bank, he harassed them. They paid me 8%. I kept the money for over seven months. The man didn't come to carry the equipment. I was, I was <laughs> going through pressure. And the one that harassed him so much, he said, Stan, I'm transferring the balance. Come on, keep the equipment. I said, no, sir, we want to move it to you. He said, move it. You know, they rode to airport. What do you call that last community before the international airport? Ajawa is there. He paid the balance until I delivered this equipment to the second wife. I was on that pace. This cannot happen in America. This cannot happen in China. This cannot happen in England. So tell me a better church to worship in outside Nigeria. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm sure some of you watched me during the INEC something. Immediately they announced that money, I called my staff, two of them are here. I said, we'll get this deal. If we don't get it, don't believe in God, because it has to do with skill, knowledge, experience. If you don't have it, you can't make money without a God Sorry, you can't make money. And I fought the Chinese. And the finally, I became consultant to Chinese. But first of all, they met my obligations, which was $1.6 million. I said, right to INEC chairman, that the Nigerian company that was not worth it is your consultant. I will sign an agreement. Now, why am I telling you these possibilities? I'm sure you don't know who my father is. You don't know who is my uncle. In the 21st century, you don't need a godfather. This is why I'm not doing oil. In the 21st century, who your father is, your mother is, is irrelevant. Who knows the father of Jonathan? In the olden days, summer girls who were boarders in secondary schools, you know, the children of the rich, when their parents come to visit them on Sunday, visiting them, they come in with Mercedes, 180. These are the big boys. <laughs> now, when they come in school, you know, their sisters will wear white socks, sandals, well made hair. They open the four doors of the Mercedes. And then they bring rice well packaged. You can smell the condiments. <laughs> and they run around. The child of a poor family, the mother borrow money, manage, enter on the side, walk half the distance to save money. Cook the rice with crayfish. Arrive in school. The guy will go behind the tree, collect the rice quietly. I will not introduce the mother to anybody. But you know what happened in the 21st century? Those children of the rich are sitting at the reception of the children of the poor. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fireworks. Where are the fireworks? Can we all get copies of this, please? Can you take a copy each? A copy each. Please face the camera. Can you? We, we, we all deal the second edition of Yes Classic to the glory of God and mankind and we pray that there will be an increase in knowledge, increase in intelligence and increase in effort and socially be in God's name. Amen. Well again, like I said, it's all about planning your passion, your ambition, Okay, the discipline in you to achieve, and um, also you need God. 
but the whole sector is naked. The whole sectors are naked. So you 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 have opportunities in this property business, not just selling property, building, construction, finishing, interiors. Okay, you have in the beverage sector. Okay, you have even in simple consultancy the health sector. Okay, food business, IT. Okay, support services. Okay, so it's um, it's huge. Nigeria is a huge market, okay, including design, what they are doing, including multimedia. So we have um, an open sky, but it's, are you determined? Okay, do you have the stamina to take some and sustain it? Well, any smart entrepreneur would know that there's no better market than Nigeria. Okay, we, we must have challenges. All over the world you have, okay, but we are Nigerians and uh, we have the capacity to rescue the country. Uh, so if you're Nigerian and you run to America, you run to Britain, what are you going to create there? You understand? Okay, so um, it's like somebody deceiving himself, running away from it, from wealth and going into poverty. This is just what it's all about. So uh, people must have the determination and uh, we need a little bit of peace. But would there be a problem? Because of our level of ambition and greed, there are bound to be problems. It's not going to stop. Okay, but where there are challenges, there are huge opportunities. Okay, and this must be the belief of an entrepreneur.